Hello guys, this is Dr. Irfan Kamruddin Andani. The purpose of my orthodontic lectures is to uh, give you the basic concepts of few topics of orthodontics, uh, especially for undergraduate students and even uh, for some practitioners who get difficulties in understanding those topics. The first topic which I would like to discuss is the Bolton analysis. Um, I, I would like to share that why I have selected this topic because during uh, my undergraduate teaching I have realized that some students really get difficulties in understanding bolt analysis and they mix this uh, topic with tooth size arch length discrepancies. So let me clear one thing that tooth size arch length discrepancies which we do for the calculation of crowding and spacing in independently, individually um, in maxilla and mandible. Like in this case, if you want to calculate the amount of crowding, you will have to first measure the space available in the dental arch and how much space is required by these teeth to align for that we will have to measure each tooth individually and then subtract the space required from space available then you will uh, get to know that how much crowding or spacing is present in in this arch however when we talk about Bolton analysis, it is not related to the tooth size arch length discrepancy. That means it is not directly related to the uh, crowding and spacing in the arches. In fact, in that we compare the mesodistal width of lower teeth with the mesodistal width of upper teeth. Now, how to measure? Measurement is very simple that you have to measure the mesodistal width of each tooth from first molar of one quadrant to the first molar of another quadrant in mandible and as well as in the maxilla. For the calculation of anterior Bolton ratio, you will have to measure the mesodistal width of anterior six teeth that means from canine to canine in mandibular arch and divide it with the sum of maxillary six teeth from canine to canine and multiply by 100 it will give you a percentage that is anterior Bolton ratio the normal value is 77.2 percent that shows that mandibular anterior teeth are way much smaller than maxillary six anterior teeth if you want to calculate the total ratio or overall ratio you will have to add three more teeth in each quadrant that means from first molar of one quadrant to the first molar of other quadrant you will sum up mesodistal width of mandibular 12 teeth and divide that by sum of maxillary 12 teeth from molar to molar and multiply by 100 the normal value is 91.3 now the question is that why anterior ratio is much smaller as compared to the overall ratio the reason is very simple that if you compare maxillary incisor with the width of mandibular incisor maxillary incisor is much more wider as compared to the uh, its counterpart However, since we uh, in overall ratio we have included first molars as well, so mandibular first molar is wider as compared to the maxillary first molar. Therefore, the ratio has uh, of overall ratio has uh, compensated to some extent and this difference is because of this reason. Now what is the significance of uh, Bolton analysis? Let me tell you one thing that uh, after Andrew 6 keys to occlusion, normal occlusion, 
many authors have included uh, Bolton analysis or normal uh, Bolton discrepancies as the seventh key to normal occlusion. That means if your patient has normal Bolton ratio anterior as well as posterior, then only you can have perfect occlusion which includes class 1 molar relationship and class 1 canine relationship over jet and normal overbite without any spacing or diastema in the arch. Now assume that one of the tooth is missing in maxilla, maxillolateral incisor as in this case or the maxillolateral incisor is pack shaped or missing, uh, how is it going to affect the Bolton discrepancy? Since the number of teeth or the size of maxillary teeth uh, has been reduced, so the overall ratio will increase. So the Bolton discrepancy will increase. It will be for anterior ratio it will be definitely more than 77.2 percent and for overall ratio it will be more than 91.3 percent because of uh, a small maxillary teeth value. Now if you want to calculate because uh, by now you have understood one thing that with this formula you can calculate Bolton discrepancy in the form of percentage. But if you want to calculate or transform or convert this percentage into millimeters because for example if a patient comes to you with pack shaped lateral incisor and you want to calculate that what should be the uh, mesodistal width of this lateral incisor if you want to give a perfect occlusion then definitely you will have to uh, know that value in millimeters instead of in percentage. So if you want to calculate that value in uh, millimeters, the formula is very simple. Follow the same formula and as we know that in this case mandibular anterior teeth there is no issue in the mesodistal width of mandibular anterior teeth. So the problem is with the maxilla. So uh, how much, what should be the value of, uh, total value of uh, maxillary teeth to reach to this percentage, you will consider maxillary teeth value as x and with simple calculation through this formula, you can uh, calculate the value of x, that will be the value of maxillary teeth, sum of maxillary teeth. Now if your patient has missing, for example missing lateral incisor and disturbed Bolton uh, discrepancy, what is the fate of that? Either you will have a space in the arch, right? If you try to close this space, keeping the canine and molar in class 1 relationship, you will have to retract the incisors to close that uh, space. So it will result in reverse over jet. And as we know that lower incisors, uh, if they don't find any contact or stop, they tend to extrude. So overbite may be disturbed like this. And if you want to close this space, keeping the overjet and overbite normal, for space closure, you will have to move upper canine and molars and total arch in class 2 relationship. Now, uh, let's consider the overall and uh, or total ratio. For example, if your patient has missing second premolar, 
in this case mandibular teeth material has reduced right so it will result in reduction or decrease in uh, overall Bolton ratio now there will be space in lower arch and if you try to close this space without moving molar there will be increased overjet and if you want to keep overjet normal and close this space your motor will be in class 3 malocclusion right so the conclusion is that Bolton ratio should be in normal range if you want to achieve normal occlusion that is if you want to achieve normal overjet normal overbite normal occlusal class 1 relationship and tight contacts then your Bolton discrepancy should be in normal range thank you